wake up. Uh, 7.30, uh, call the meeting to order for today, January 17th. Uh, besides uh, council members uh, present in chambers, we have CFO Ganita on video. Uh, Councillors Powell and Boychuk are absent this evening with permission. Uh, Mayor Jacobson is absent with permission um, on AMM business today. Uh, if he does get back into town, he will join us if we're still in session. Uh, and Chief uh, Fordorchuk uh, may join us after his mutual aid district meeting if we are also in, still in session. Okay. And also just joining on video is uh, Director of uh, Recreation for Dorchuk. Okay. Um, resolved that the agenda for January 7, 2023, regular meeting of council be adopted. Uh, a mover, Councillor White. Seconder, Councillor Bobick. Discussion, additions. All in favor? Carried. Resolved that the minutes of the January 3rd, 2023 regular council of meeting be approved. Uh, a mover. Uh, Councilor Bobic. Uh, seconder. Uh, Councilor Medwid. Okay. Any discussions, errors, or omissions? Seeing none, all in favor? Carried. We don't have any reception or delegations, uh, no petitions, uh, no communications. So we'll move down to uh, seven reports of committees. Uh, be it resolved that the Director of Public Works report be received. Uh, you see that on your uh, agenda. Uh, any questions to uh, Mr. Harvey? Just a comment uh, on the last paragraph there, you're talking about their responsibilities, T-H-E-I-R, and uh, the rest of it looks awesome. Good, good job as usual, thank you. Any other questions or comments? Okay, none, uh, so a mover. I guess I should have moved that first. Uh, Councillor Bobick, seconder, uh, Councillor Medwid. All in favor? carried okay. uh, there's nothing in other reports so it's council and ceo reports we'll start with councillor bobbeck uh just the call meeting last week lots of good discussion uh just to let everybody know tomorrow night is watershed's election we'll be attending there just to uh just to make a comment i just wondering about anything movement on the apartments on 5th Avenue 7th? Uh, there, it'll be during budget deliberations. Okay. Uh, but there won't be movement until we get a resolution from council to move forward. Okay, so is there, am I under the impression that sooner or later the town of Florida may end up with that property? Is that what? Only if through tax sale if they do not pay the taxes. So the stall right now for the building is because of the insurance company? Uh, no, the insurance company has done what they need to do. Uh, they've informed us that they are, they're finished. I believe there's a determination that needs to be made, but that not, has nothing to do with the town. That's between the owner and the insurance company on whether it's insured or not. <clears throat> okay, I guess they can't answer us that question. No, that they, they won't tell us the answer either way. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. That's it. Okay. Councillor White? Yeah, it's fairly busy. Uh, we had the cow meeting on the on the 10th, and we uh, spent some time talking about, as we always do, trying to make ourselves better. Uh, snow removal was high in the priority, and crime was high in the priority, as it is so often. And we also talked about the vet clinic and, and some concerns of trying to work uh, better with that with that entity. I'd, I'd still like to mention for, for the uh, the input from the community that council spent a lot of time, as our administrators have, uh, working with the local RCMP, the provincial RCMP out of Winnipeg, 
the crest team out of Dauphin, uh, the D division inspectors, and uh, we've had meetings with the Crown. Uh, we brought in a senior Crown attorney. We're attempting to have a meeting with a judge, and we're trying to set up another meeting uh, where we can try to make things better. Uh, it concerns me that sometimes people say uh, council is not doing all they can. I suspect we're doing all we can and more, but we always need local solutions, and we're encouraged the community as a whole to give us solutions if they have any. And, and I think number one is to report all, each and every crime, because if you don't report all the little ones that they don't get talked about, they don't get into a data bank, and we can't use that data to, uh, to enhance our cause. Uh, on the 11th, uh, I met with Staff Sergeant Duncan to do exactly that, talk about some local solutions, and he is going to meet with us again in the near future to try to have some specifics. On the 16th, uh, CEO Poole, myself, Councillor Morio, Councillor Medwood, and uh, Director of Recreation uh, Fedorchuk and uh, John went to uh, campsite to look at their rink and the rink uh, rehabilitations that are having there. I think it was very valuable, uh, some of the uh, issues that they had in solving their problems, some of the strengths, things they suggested to us how we can uh, better, better approach ours. So we appreciate the, uh, the help from the CAMSAC people. On uh, January 26, uh, I just want to let you guys know that there's an LP open house and it's uh, from 6 to 8 p.m. and LP is a significant contributor to the economy and the well-being of our community. And that's at the Conservation District building, which is sure used a lot, and I thank you, Councillor, for letting us use that. And on February the 9th, uh, Councillor Mario and myself and Councillor Paul, hopefully, will be meeting some resident docs, I believe, are coming out of Dauphin. Uh, I've been a little frustrated, as the team has been, relative to the communication. It can always be better. And I'd ask the community, to, if they have suggestions, how to recruit doctors and or retain doctors, nurses, physiotherapists, healthcare aides, all of the above, please feel free to share them with myself or Councillor Moore or Councillor Paul. It, this is a, a situation that's not going to go away. Doctors will come and go as well the nurses. And uh, the community supporting that cause, the keeping them, inviting them to your service clubs, inviting them to your church groups, is all appreciated. So uh, that's it. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. Councillor Medwood. Uh, I attended the uh, Friendship Centre in Bozeman Rink at a winter festival on Saturday. I attended that. They had skating, sledding, bonfire, food, and church's kennel was out with their dog sled teams uh, giving rides to the kids. It was attended by about 300 people or so. I think it was a great uh, event and I hoping to see it back next year. I did overhear some talk at the bonfire about maybe adding some activities such as moose calling and trap setting challenges and I think that would be a great addition. Kind of makes me think of the events available to watch or participate in up in uh, the Paw for Trappers Festival so I think that would be great to have a little mini version of that in our own community. Uh, the field trip to the CAMSAC Arena, I thought it was very insightful being able to uh, communicate with their uh, retrofit and how it's going. There were a few major concerns that did come to my mind that we need to keep be mindful of with our own. One was the increased cost from what they thought it was going to be to what it grew to be as well as the fact that six months after the repair and replacement of the roof, they're experiencing leaking. So I'd be very interested in keeping in touch to figure out or to know how that is dealt with because my other concern is they just got ice back in December 2022. So to me, that's not really a long period of time to determine if there's going to be any other issues that kind of come out or present themselves. So something else we need to be mindful as we're moving forward and uh, considering how to proceed with our own arena. Uh, protective services. I do have a COPP meeting on January 19th. Um, I have spoken with one of the business owners in the community about possibly having COPP members monitor um, video footage of the streets and whatnot. I will be taking that up to the COPP board with our quarterly board meeting because there is some CC 
RT rules and regulations that we'll have to take into consideration and how that plays into the mandates of the COPP program for privacy and liability, things like that. So uh, it will be going up to the board. Um, the Manitoba program coordinator, uh, we had a conversation. I let him know that Steve Hansen has been working with our businesses originally to uh, basically uh, acquire camera systems that can be linked and shared information. So he's going to actually reach out to Officer Henson to kind of have a little initial conversation before we get to that board level. Uh, animal control, I've reached out to both the Vet Clinic and Swan Valley Animal Protection League requesting informal meetings to gain understanding on their perspectives of our animal control bylaw and their ideas on how we can work together moving forward. I potentially have a meeting with Swan Valley Animal Protection League on Friday. Um, and I did want to request that moving forward, I would like to see in the protective services report if we can include details on all dealings to do with animals. I'm still waiting for that information on November and December's report from the protective services as to what the calls pertain to regarding the cats and dogs and how they were handled. So if we could get that information and then moving forward maybe include the details that would be appreciated. Uh, transportation and environmental health services. I've done a little further research with regards to the what's come about from our discussion in the cow meeting on snow removal and Swan Valley West's Facebook and December 13th meeting. They have four graders Currently, a JD870, a JD772, a CAT160, and a CAT140 grader models. They are waiting possession of a fifth grader that they've ordered. I believe it's a JD772. And as soon as they obtain that and their full fleet is operational, they plan on delegating their CAT140 will be designated as a spare. Uh, the discussion at their table implied that the CAT 140 would be stored at one of the shops and brought into service for heavy snowfalls as needed and or should one of their other graders break down. They employ casual operators and spoke of hiring more casuals so that they might be able to run two shifts per day to make sure the roads are getting cleared as quickly as possible. And roads around the airport are in Swan Valley West jurisdiction and they already store a couple graders at their yard just south of town. General inquiries into people who work in the industry and work with the equipment, they confirmed that a CAP 140, and I googled the specs, they can be anywhere from 179 to 250 horsepower with a weight of 38,000 pounds to 42,000 pounds with a blade width of 12 feet. They are, it is capable of clearing snow at the airport as would any of the other models in the Swan Valley West fleet and ours. The town's old grader used to be a CAT 140 model and it had been used to clear the snow at the airport at one time. Uh, further inquiries into industry standards. It is not standard industry practice to require equipment to be stored and designated solely for use at the location. Um, they prefer to be able to take their equipment from one job site to the other so unless somebody put in their tender bid that it was a mandatory that they designate their equipment solely for the use of that job site it's not something that would be expected from industry if it was a requirement and they put a bid on it then they absolutely would charge additional costs and fees to cover that and they also confirmed that it is standard for a bid to include an on standby fee for retainer for providing 24 seven on call service if it's required. The town has one grader. Uh, I still haven't heard back from my request for information to administration on some of the financials and contracts and one of the questions was what model or grader is. Uh, currently, we do not hire casual operators. We do not have a backup grader. 
And it was said in the cow that the loader is our backup for the airport and it could clear the runways, however it takes longer, so that's why we use the grader out there. So if our grader breaks down, it's not only the airport priority services that are impacted, it's our own streets and roads. So my takeaway from my research, where I got to anyways, is that Swan Valley West is about to become the best equipped and most logical municipal option to provide the main snow removal services at the airport. If needed, I think we can agree to split the contract so that the town is providing the 24-7 on-call service and then either Swan Valley West or a third party contractor picking up the main services. It would also... Okay, uh, Councillor Medwin, uh, like your, this is uh, your reports on your... It is my stock. report. This is uh, all the work I've been doing. Yeah, but uh, I think you, you're, you're diving into the operations of a con service contract that we have with the Municipal Airport Commission with details that if you want to discuss of how to either the town sever or provide notice on that contract, you can bring notice to uh, a future meeting. This is the conclusion of the work I've been working on this week. I feel it's fair to share it. I'm not asking for anything to be re a resolution to come to the table at this moment. I'm concluding on my work and what I've been doing. <clears throat> I'll, I'll give you a few more minutes, but you, you need to wrap up. Like I said, uh, this is, uh, we have a contract that's at, with the Municipal um, Airport Commission to provide service. And unless we're looking to change that, uh, you can bring that to, uh, on the agenda at a call meeting or, uh, or we can discuss that. Um, like, as I said, uh, this is the reports like on your committees. Uh, what you hear is you're proposing changes to that, uh, uh, we haven't discussed um, that are uh, not public yet um, so those are discussions that are uh, either reserved for in camera when it becomes to uh, in the, uh, the uh, negotiations that we may be participating in so. i am a committee member for transportation and environmental health services this is the work i have been doing in response to the cow meeting we had which was open to the public, even if no public attended, it was still open to the public. So I'm not discussing anything that would be considered, in my opinion, in camera, because we had this discussion in a meeting that was open to the public, and therefore, to me, that definition says it is public. So this is the work I've been doing to follow up on that conversation. I'm putting it in my counselor report, and I, I'm about to ask for Councillor Bobbitt, Councillor White, if you would be so kind as maybe to indicate that there is a solution for snow removal services at the airport that would not require the pur purchase of additional equipment, which would be required of the airport commission coming up with fees and or potentially taxpayers having to pay more. It would be greatly appreciated. It would also might be of interest for us to speak to our neighbors once they are up to full fleet because if they have a grader that is available for a spare to them it might be something we could look at potentially arranging some sort of agreement so should our one and only grader break down we might be able to rent their grader to ensure we keep our uh, areas uh, cleared as well and not have to go out of the community or as far away as Brandon or Winnipeg to acquire the equipment for replacement if needed. Uh, analytics for snow removal. Uriah provided them for me. I broke them down. November 28th. Facebook post had 2,093 views. Website pop-up was approximately 200 views. Snow removal page had 25.3%, which is about uh, 239 views. On January 1st and 2nd, that was the next peak in the analytics that he showed with the end of December snowstorm. There was no Facebook post for that one. The website had approximately 180 views. The snow removal page was 3%, which is approximately 57 views. Uh, the takeaway from that for me is Facebook has more views 
And although there was a spike in website visits at that time, it's significantly less than the Facebook views. And I don't feel people are buying into all the work to get the minimal information on the website. I also reviewed chapter eight in Profit First, Find Money in Your Business, because that chapter specifically works to breaking down your processes within your business to find efficiencies. So it looks on finding better, faster, cheaper ways. So the more efficient we are, we increase our profit margins. Efficiency is essentially the fewest things we can do repetitively to serve a consistent core customer need. And if we look for striving for two times the results with half the effort, we just might see some significant changes. As an example and how this can apply, and it's not just business, but UPS wanted to improve their fuel efficiency and lower costs, and as of 2006, all of UPS trucks almost always make right turns only. It equals less time waiting in left turn lanes. It equals less fuel burnt waiting to cross traffic, and it resulted in a $6 million per year in savings just by one simple little change in how they do their routes. Our population demographics from 2016, we have a total, had a total of 3,964, and this is according to Statistics Canada. Age 50 to 64 is 715, age of 65 plus is 1,055. That totals 1,770, or 45% of our population is 50 years of age or older. So to completely disregard this age population in trying to find improvements and efficiencies in our policy, I think is the wrong way to go. My takeaway from all of that is better communication with the public. If we're using Facebook to put out dates, times, and which streets the operators are on, it will equal faster, more efficient work by our operators when the roads are clear of any vehicles blocking their work area, and can potentially result to cheaper expenses when you consider factor in the potential for less money on operating costs, labor, fuel, wear and tear on equipment. So more efficient snow removal service equals happier citizens and fewer complaints. So something to take into consideration as we move forward. I would have taken my research further, but as I mentioned, I'm waiting for administration to get back to me to provide some information on financials to actually put some numbers to uh, some of these things. And uh, regarding snow removal agreements with the province, Swan Valley West Council discussed in the similar concern that we have with uh, our agreement. So they're experiencing some similar issues with the province. So I was wondering if that could maybe be added to our G8 meeting if it's not already on the agenda, because it might be worth our while to see if our neighboring municipalities can also gather some data and maybe the valley can approach the province for better terms and agreements for next year's snow removal and possibly if it's not on our mayor's AMM list to take up, maybe it's something that can go up that direction as well for a province-wide uh, municipal approach to that government body to see if we can't get better agreements in the future for our snow removal. And that concludes my counselor's report. Thank you. Okay. Sorry, wait. Just a just a comment. I'm not finding anything that you said disrespectful or not important. It certainly was, but somehow, unless I misled the CEO pool, this section of council is for us to bring reports on meetings we've attended in general, brief, concise terms, so the public can say, hey, "Here's what they're doing." Here's in-depth evaluation is more of responsibility of Cal, where the public is welcome to attend also. So. Uh, everything you said is accurate, but if, if, if all of us went to great length of every meeting we've attended, we'll never get to the core of our agenda. And, and I don't th I, I think this is for reports. Uh, the discussion is wonderful, but it, I don't think it's a time or place. Okay, thank you, Councillor White. Uh, for myself... Um, I had a hand up, sir. Oh, go ahead. Uh, just to speak during Councillor Edwards, if you want to chair that committee, uh, I think I've been in every grade except for the 140. 
Uh, you feel free to call me at any time. I could probably explain some of that to you so on some of that operations, but I'll, uh, if you want. Uh, sometimes I'm hard to get a hold of them on the road, but feel free to phone me and some of that I could explain to you pretty simply. So. Sure. Okay. Okay. Okay, for myself, like I said, uh, last week of the 10th, we had our Committee of the Whole where we discussed policies and bylaws that will be forthcoming. Um, as previously mentioned uh, by Councillor White, uh, we had a, a brief meeting with the Medical Recruitment Committee regarding doctor uh, recruitment and some ideas on how to publicize our incentives um, out there uh, to be competitive with other organizations that are uh, using various... Uh, advertising and social media means uh, to get the word out of what their incentives are. So, uh, And then on the 11th, um, Councillor White, myself, uh, CEO Poole, and His Worship, uh, uh, Mr. Jacobson, was uh, we met with RCMP Duncan where we discussed some of the staffing issues and other issues and concerns that are hot uh, button topics at this uh, point in time with uh, potential solutions uh, going forward. And then uh, yesterday, um, as reported, I also attended the, uh, the visit and tour at the Camps Act Arena where uh, we learned some pitfalls and some areas of concern and uh, things to watch out for along with some advice and things where we're uh, very comparable in their projects. That's with ours. So. Uh, that's all for myself. Uh, CEO Pool, uh, go ahead, uh, Councilman. Um, what was the date of the meeting you had with um um, Staff Sergeant Duncan? Uh, the 11th. The 11th. Um, is it possible that I can be included, uh, being that I am a member of the Protective Services Committee, because I was not aware that there was going to be a meeting with Staff Sergeant Duncan? Okay. So I would appreciate being informed of these meetings so I can attend them. Okay. Uh, CEO Poole, do you have anything not to add? Uh, yeah, <clears throat> working on several requests for information from Council on those responses. Uh, working with our lawyer uh, to try and put an end to our union contract. Uh, looking at next steps to, to, it's still not signed, so we're going on over a year now where, okay. where we have ratified or close to ratified but do not have a signed agreement. Uh, so we are looking at possibly going to the Labour Board. Uh, working closely with Director Fedorchuk on the arena project. I uh, had a meeting today with uh, Dan Mazur's office uh, regarding hydrogen gas production in Swan Valley. Uh, and then, of course, attended the crime meeting that was discussed. Uh, and just to let Council know, we did implement the, myself and CFO Ganita implemented the three of payroll cutoff uh, procedure that we've been wanting to for the past five years so that is complete and uh, yeah we'll be hopefully getting closer to electronic payments 2023. Okay uh, thank you any questions uh, to uh, CEO Poole on that? Okay seeing none. Uh, eight new business uh, 8.1 Resolved that the Chief Financial Officer uh, be authorized to sign the tax service agreement letter dated January 10th, 2023 for the management of property tax arrears uh, recovery. Uh, we have a mover, Councillor Medwid, seconder, Councillor Bobic, uh, discussion, Councillor Medwid. Uh, it mentioned something about committing to a date uh, does signing this letter have us committing to a date, and if so, what is the date? Uh, CFO Pool, do you have? Uh, when I read the document, that right. CFO Ganita, not Pool. It, it indicated that the date has to be set by resolution of council. So I'm just wondering, by agreeing to this right now, does that also confirm a date? Because it doesn't show a date in the resolution. You may be referring to the the actual tax sale auction that it refers to, that the municipality sets the date, tax service uh, manages the actual tax sale. So I'm, I'm guessing, but I'm, I'm just from what you're saying, I'm, I'm guessing that you're meaning that it's mentioning the actual tax sale date which the municipality provides. Yeah, it did. Ref it was referencing something to that effect. So that's 
and as this resolution is being read off, I notice there's not a date included in it. So is this just a resolution saying that he can sign the papers and that date will be forthcoming for us to um, confirm and resolve, or is this uh, the whole nine yards? I guess I don't understand your question. Which um, date are you you're asking for? When does this contract end? No, Three years. it's. Um, give me one second. I'll see if I can find it quickly in the document. Date I see is it engages us for a three-year term ending yeah. December 31st, 2026. It may be terminated by either party with 30 days written notice. Uh, no, that's not the portion I was um, questioning. That one I'm fine with. If you email me the question, I can get back to you. Oh, here, the section, I think it's on the second page. Please contact us to reserve your tax sale date. If you bring a resolu resolution to set the date before council, please check with us first to confirm the date is available. So that's why I'm just confirming. This yeah. is just to say uh, CFO Ganita can sign it. The date will be something determined in the future. Yeah, we, we confirm with tax service the actual tax sale date, and then we get the resolution that it will be that date so we can advertise. Right. Well, CFO Ganita, go ahead. Uh, council already set the date uh, with the re by resolution last December. It's already, it's already set and, and confirmed with tax service. Okay, thank you, CFO Ganina. Because this, this is a resolution to engage them for three years, and then once annually we set the tax sale date. That's correct. And that's pre confirmed by CFO Ganita before it comes for resolution. Okay. Perfect. Thank you for clarifying that. Okay. Uh, any other discussion? No. Okay. All in favor? Carried. Okay. 8.2 snow removal policy are resolved that the updated. Snow removal policy dated January 17th, 2023, be approved. Uh, a mover, Councillor White, seconder, Councillor Bobick. Uh, you'll see the snow removal updates that was added there by Mr. Harvey that outlined the dates that we discussed at the last uh, um, cow meeting, which highlighted the changes um, to map A uh, that made all high school zones. Um, uh, priority one or zone one routes along with 10th Avenue North and then uh, added verbiaging in there regarding that there will be uh, an effort to increase uh, public communication through various means uh, to get the information out there um, regarding uh, the snow removal for the day that's going on. So, any other discussion? Okay. All in favor? Yeah, it was Councillor White and okay, Councillor Bobbick. Okay, so all, all in favor? Opposed? Carried. Um, I'd like to comment. Okay, uh, resolution's been closed. Discussion was passed. It's on my... On your... My objection. Like my not being, my opposing. Okay, uh, it's either you're for or against. Yeah, you, you, I'm you, against. you had your opportunity during discussion period to give your reasoning why, if, where you're voting. The vote is passed. We're moving on to 8.3. Okay, call it a learning curve then, if you may, because I thought if we were in opposition, we were allowed to give a reason why we're in opposition after we've voted that no. way. If it's to occur in discussion, then I apologize. May I? Okay. have an exception on this time uh, under the section okay. for before we get the exception since that's uh, under this procedures bylaw uh, we'll need to have approval from the rest of the members present present to make the adjustment so uh, in, in favor okay go ahead under the driveway section we still have that starting with negative uh, vocabulary versus a positive and as for the rest um, I think my 
uh, councillor report kind of speaks to some of the other concerns I still have outstanding with the policy, and that would be my reason okay, for the opposition. Okay. Uh, 8.3 accommodation tax bylaw, uh, whereas the municipal taxation. And funding act provides that the council of a municipality may pass bylaws imposing such forms of taxes as it deems advisable within the municipality therefore be it resolved that the town of swan river commence the drafting of an accommodation tax bylaw uh, moved by councillor bobick seconded by councillor medwid uh, discussion And for public consumption, this is just a authorization to administration to start the process to do the research and drafting of a bylaw. It is not to implement any accommodation, accommodation tax bylaw at this point, but to do the research and bring information forward to council. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Okay. Section 9, unfinished business, fee schedule 2023, resolved that the fee schedule for 2023 uh, be resolved as, or received as approved, or and approved. Uh, moved by Councilor Medwood, seconded by uh, Councilor Bobbick. Any discussion? Uh, seeing none, all in favor? Opposed? Uh, carried. Accounts 10.1 uh, resolved that the accounts as follows be hereby approved for payment. General accounts checks number 29822 to number 29875, totaling $142,167.47 as listed on Schedule A. Check number 29824 replaces check number 29562, lost in mail. Number two, payroll account checks number 5250 to number 5256, totaling $92,794.85 as listed in Schedule B. And number three, direct deposit payments totaling $17,257.89 as listed in Schedule C. Uh, do we have a mover? Councilor Medwood, seconded by Councilor White. Any discussion, uh, Councilor Medwood? Uh, number 29825, Adams Contracting, $13,650 for structure demolition, yard cleanup, and backfill. What was this for? I believe that was for the destruction of a house. It was, uh, went into tax sale and became ours and was not safe. It was uh, condemned at the time. Okay, so it was on town uh, property? Yes. Okay. Uh, and just out of curiosity, do we know the rough square footage? Uh, 900. So just like a bungalow? It, yeah. It comes with that price tag? Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm not questioning the price tag. Yeah. I'm just trying to see what what we get yeah. for that value or money is what yeah, I'm trying to square footage on that one. Pardon? Get you the square footage. I don't need the exact. Yeah. I'm just like, are we talking like a two story, like 3,000 square foot and 900 square foot? Yeah. It was a, a small one yeah. with a basement. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Councilor Bob. Right. Like, just to add to that, there's probably trees that were burnt there and there was lots of rubbish in the yard and other things. There, there, there was a lot of. So there was, it wasn't mess. just the house. Or, yeah. I was going to say that was going to be my next question. Are we talking, we have a clear lot now with yeah, no like, That's landscaping. correct. It was a full remediated lot now. Yeah. Okay, it's, so it's, it's ready for sale. Dirt. Yeah. Okay. So. And just one more question yeah, go ahead. Um, on this particular one. Does it make a difference in pricing whether you're reme like remediating? I'm not sure if I'm using the proper language, but having to dig out a basement? like Definitely. Okay, and when we're doing this, a basement does, the foundation does actually have to be dug out. It can't just be that's, backfilled. That's, that's in a bylaw. Okay. Yes. Yeah, we do have that in a bylaw, and just so that if someone backfills it in, it makes it cheap for them. But then when the next person that could be five or ten years down the road, uh, it becomes an issue because 
one for when they go to dig build their house, but then two, it can become an issue for uh, our guys for when we go to do the water and sewer. So like if they excavate most of it, but they leave a concrete wall and then we go to dig in the water and sewer and now we're running into this concrete wall that creates a big issue. So that's why it's in the bylaw for them to pull yeah, it out. No, fair enough. It sounds right. good to me and I was hoping that was going to be the answer. Right, yeah. And, so like, and once annually, um, Mr. Harvey and it, it puts out requests for hourly rates of contracts. So I believe this is like the hourly rate times the amount of hours to, uh, to do it. Or, this one was, or a quote. Ten, was, was a quote separately. Okay, yeah. perfect. Because it involved multiple pieces of equipment. Okay, so it was a, a, a tendered contract. Okay. Um, line 29844 for Lou McClurg, the 2755 for Main Street snow clearing. So that's uh, the sidewalk going out from uh, Extra Foods out towards Highway 10. So he does that sidewalk. Okay, so it was sidewalk yeah. uh, work? Okay. Um, the 29849 for Office Innovation Inc. We have 956.88 for town office arena and pool copier contracts. How or why is that different from the? That's the service contract. So we have the leasing contract plus a service contract. So when they go down, we need them fixed. So that service contract provides us immediate assistance when they do go down. Okay, so with it being a service contract, is this just a flat rate retainer fee that we or is the service contract basically based on the service required and that's something was serviced in this time frame? Uh, see service, con service contracts for copiers are based on the number of copies made. Okay, and then they just get a, a routine cleaning or servicing? And repairs. And repairs? Yeah. Okay, fair enough, thank you. Um, 29850 Old, Old Town Hardscapes, 2100 for a cement saw for the fire department. Now that one I, I cannot explain. I would need uh, Chief Orchuk to get back to you. If we can please add that to the list, okay. I'd appreciate it. Yeah. Shot in the dark on that motorbike. I believe that would be similar to a chainsaw, but designed to cut concrete. Okay, and then I would like to know why our fire department requires that equipment. Okay, uh, we'll, uh, uh, Director of Recreation for Dorchek, you might have an answer for us on that since you're on the fire department. Yeah, that's a concrete quickie saw for cutting stucco and uh, also um, hoods of cars and extrication events. We do have an older one that's um, uh, gas powered, but it was malfunctioning lately, I believe. Um, but this is an electric, electric version of that, which we're transitioning to. Thank you. It's, you're welcome. Okay, Councillor Bobbick. Well, it's purchased off Old Town Hardscapes. Is that a local person? I believe yeah. so. Yeah. Okay, so like, this is a new thing. There's warranty here. I believe so. I can answer. Okay, fine. That's, no, that's fine. Thank you. I can answer that as well if you like. Okay. Um, there's a deal on on the saw, the Milwaukee saw, <laughs> and the Old Town Hardscapes. That's uh, one of our firefighters picked it up, and that's what that's oh, referring okay. to. Yeah, that explains it. Thank you. Okay. Uh, two nine eight five two for Pitney Bowes leasing. Uh, one thousand five hundred fifty six seventy two postage meter quarterly lease. Now, is this just literally for le leasing the machine itself? It doesn't include postage. Uh, that's correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the postage is not included. So the question comes, because I don't doubt we need this at quarterly intervals, but ha do you have to lease it like all year? Like can you not just lease it for, like I know quarterly we have the utility bills go out and then we have the property taxes go out. Can you not maybe lease it just like for even a month, a we, couple times a year to service have, those? Um, we have much more mail. Than just the water bills and the taxes. So we have mail, mail every day that goes out. It is definitely required. Okay, but we have enough in between to justify oh, yes. the price? Okay, yeah. then fair enough. 
Um, if I was just thinking if it was just little bits in between, then it might be just as cost effective to walk down to the post office and um, pay for postage there. Um, the visa, the PV mark, 191.42, I'm happy to see we've supported local for some janitorial supplies. Kudos to whomever made that decision. Um, Flamens, 332.64, have we looked into whether or not we can um, just buy these outright or we're just going to continue with the monthly lease? Uh, to be honest, I did not approach Flamens to see if they're for sale, but we, we would lose everything that we rented. They're not going to give us back in time what we paid. So we would have to pay their value of what they're worth if they're willing to sell them. Um, I think it would still be worth looking into because yes. from the sounds of it from Councillor Bobick's inquiry, we have no idea when we're going to be able to take them down at that apartment block. So. Considering by the sounds of it, we probably, I think we gauge, might have spent already about as much as they'd be worth, so maybe we can look at... Um, I believe Chief Rodorchuk has already started that investigation. Okay. Um, so see if we'll if you want to touch base with uh, Chief Rodorchuk. He has already, I think about two months ago or something like that, but a lot of it was hinging on the uh, uh, information that we were waiting from on the insurance company if we would continue needing them or not. Right. So, uh, any others, uh, Councilor Madrid? Uh, uh, yeah, the last one, 29867 for Swan Hill Properties and Appraisals. It's the 39060 for the impounded vehicles storage fee for December. Yeah, we have contacted them to let them know that uh, that they're going to go in the, in the next auction. Uh, we just don't know when that is. So. We either have to pay the rental fee until Swan Hills has an auction, or we have to go pick up the vehicles, put them in our compound, and then take them to an auction that's happening, or go get them when a different auction is happening. So that, those are our options. But we would have to use our own public works, which means pulling them off snow removal and everything else. I, I might have the same response possibly as Councillor Bobbick, but my mind is saying, okay, so then why don't we ask when their next auction is going to be? And if it's yeah, going to be yeah. a few months down the road, it might be more cost effective to pick them up, put them in our compound, and then... Yeah, we have. We just haven't gotten a response yet. Okay. okay. Councillor Bobbick on that topic? Uh, I have no idea what these cars are worth, but I don't imagine they're much, but why wouldn't you just phone an auto record and tell them to pick them up and get what you get for them? You're going to move them. Gonna, yeah. It's going to be a cost of moving. We can, yes, we can inquire with Swan Valley Scrap. As is where it is. Well, there's other people in the country that I know Swan Valley Scrap takes. And I, I shouldn't say that, but mm -hmm. there's, just get the things and get them out of there. I could potentially be on board with that yeah. option yeah. too, because I'm thinking this is a another bill that we don't necessarily need to keep on the books month after month. Okay. And again, that's just my suggestion, so whatever yeah. works for you. Any other? That was the last one, thank you. Okay. Uh, any other questions to the. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Carried. Okay. Uh, section 11, bylaws. Third reading. Uh, resolve that bylaw 21 2022, being a bylaw to consolidate and amend our animal control bylaws to be read a third time and passed. Uh, we have a mover, Councillor White, seconded by uh, Councillor Medwid, uh, discussion. And as you'll see uh, on there, uh, before I get to you, uh, Councillor Medwid, uh, there's the, uh, uh, we have to make it a, uh, I jumped ahead here, Council has to decide if we want to add option A um, or option B uh, in regards to our discussion that we had at the cow regarding section uh, 8.2 of the, the bylaw, where option A um, indicates uh, that we are having a tiered fine system when it comes to infractions, um, clearly spelled out in the bylaw, um, versus option two, which removes 8.2 in its entirety, which leaves the individual to interpret that there may or may not be tiered fines. 
That's correct. So uh, before we get to the bylaw for pa uh, either passing or defeating, um, along with the other changes that are highlighted um, in the report, um, I will poll council here uh, regarding either going with option A or option B. But is there any questions before we do that to administration uh, for clarification on that section? Or will we all understand it, Council White? Well, it was a preference of uh, uh, Council Mr. Poole. The the original intent that we that we list the tiered fees in the bylaw, so that would be option A. Uh, that's the recommendation. Okay. Uh, Councilor Medwin. Um, option A, A point two is in direct conflict with section eight one as pointed out in the Cal meeting. So I'm in opposition to both of them, but if you go with option A, you're not only passing a bylaw that is dysfunctional, you're now passing a bylaw that's dysfunctional and has a conflict within it. So what exactly is the contradiction? Uh, section 8.1 says that cats cannot roam at large. Section 8.2 basically implies that they can as long as they have a tag and are spayed. It's a direct conflict. You can't have both. I guess this, this bylaw is pointing out at the direction of council that if the cat is tagged and, and uh, spayed, you know, we give it back, but we, won't, we, we, we still give them a fine for being at large. They do not get a fine for being not tagged. They do not get a fine for being not sterilized. So that's the tiered part, is if they're at large, they're going to get a fine, whether they're tagged, sterilized or not. If we catch them and there's no tag, and they're sterilized, they're going to get two fines. If we catch them and there's nothing, they're going to get three fines. So that's the point. That's the entire point of the bylaw. It still creates a contradiction in the bylaw within itself. Director Harvey? I think it's been changed, the wording, because it says in addition to 818, owners are subject to additional fines if they're cat. Does That's that correct. correct. So and the wording has changed from what you were referring to, I believe. Right. We, we did make a point to re reference 81A. In addition to cats running at large, owners are subject to additional fines if they don't have an identification tag, they're not sterilized. So I think that's been changed from the Cal meeting. Yeah, 8.2 says, in addition to 8.1a, owners are subject to additional fines if their cat, A, does not have an identification tag, and B, has not been sterilized unless the owner has obtained a kennel permit as under Section 6. Okay, any other questions for clarification? Okay, uh, all in favor of option A being inserted into the bylaw? All in favor of option B inserted into the bylaw? Uh, Councilor Medwood is um, indicating no preference or no, for either. I'm indicating I in disagreement with both. Okay. I am not in favor of either. Okay. So back to the bylaw, uh, where option A, um, inserting uh, the language that's, that's there, the result that bylaw 21 2022 being a bylaw to consolidate the amended and amend our animal control bylaws be read a third time and passed. Uh, this is a recorded vote. Any dis other discussion? No? Okay, all in favor? Opposed? Carried. Okay. Uh, no notice of motion section 13 in camera uh, resolved that pursuant to section 152.3 of the municipal act council go into committee and close the meeting to the public items to be discussed as our arena project do we have a mover councillor bobbick uh, seconded by councillor white all in favor opposed carried 
that we are in Cramo. Good. Items arising out of camera. Um, do we need to mention about the, the notice or? Uh, since it wasn't a resolution. It's not a resolution, so it's not required, but we can note it for the record. If we yeah, I guess note for the record that uh, Council is given administration direction to proceed with a public notice regarding uh, the arena project and the borrowing bylaw associated with that, um, pursuant to the 21 day requirement of notice, which will be advertised at a potential special meeting coming up in three weeks. Right, not a not a go to proceed with the project whatsoever or even approve any dollar amount, simply a ad for a public notice for a borrowing bylaw for the project. Okay, thank you. Uh, resolve that this regular meeting of council now adjourn at 8.52 p.m. Moved by Councilor Medwid, seconded by Councilor Bobbick. Objection? Uh, discussion? No. No, I want to talk to Okay. Um, all in favor? I'm going to tell more.